Welcome to A Lively Hope and the 14th episode in my series, Signs of the Apocalypse, entitled Francis the Dung Beetle. In prepared remarks, Pope Francis on January 24th again warned about the evils of fake news. The scandal this time was his reference to the powerfully atheistic novel, The Brothers Karamazov. For more on the bizarre relationship between Francis and Dostoevsky, please see episode 13 entitled Francis Karamazov. It's interesting to note that an interlinear of the Bible shows the ancient Greek word for gospel is euangelion. It's uh, Strong's Greek 2098. Euangelion literally means good news. So I think we can confidently state that in terms of Christianity, the gospel is the genuine or authentic news, and a false gospel is fake news. Those following along with this papacy know Francis has been preaching a false gospel, or fake news, for nearly five years. And while some of his deception is insidious or nuanced, other events are just gratuitous and vulgar. Let's look back on two such vulgar events that rhyme, once while he was Cardinal Bergoglio and another more recently as Pope Francis. In both instances, Bergoglio gratuitously used the perverse sexual terms coprophilia and coprophagia. In the first instance, he was describing how the Roman Curia is often perceived negatively due to the exaggerated and manipulated accounts by journalists. Archbishop Jorge Bergoglio, in an interview with the Vatican Insider in February of 2012, states, Journalists sometimes risk becoming ill from coprophilia and thus fomenting coprophagia, which is a sin that taints all men and women, that is, the tendency to focus on the negative rather than the positive aspects. In the second instance, he was describing the pitfalls of fake news. Pope Francis, in an interview with the Belgian Catholic weekly Tertio in December of 2016, states, And then, I believe that the media should be very clear, very transparent, and not fall prey, without offense please, to the sickness of coprophilia, which is always wanting to communicate scandal, to communicate ugly things, even though they may be true. And since people have a tendency towards the sickness of coprophagia, it can do great harm. Well, offense taken, Francis, and I contest that people have a tendency towards the sickness of coprophagia. Coprophilia and coprophagia, you see, are mental disorders. In the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, DSM-5, coprophilia is classified under Section 302.89, Other Specified Paraphilic Disorder. Coprophagia is often described as following from coprophilia. The first event did not go unnoticed by Catholic author and pit bull, Randy Engel. Engel, whose strident tone reminds me of the severe, yet devout nun, Sister John Edwin, who taught me at St. Francis Xavier's School, is the author of the five-volume book set entitled The Rite of Sodomy, Homosexuality, and the Roman Catholic Church. In a lengthy open letter to Francis written in November of 2013, Engel alternates between information, inquisition, and condemnation regarding homosexuality, pederasty, and the direction of the post-conciliar Catholic Church. In what amounts to essentially a postscript, she references the 2012 interview with Now the term coprophilia, which you use spontaneously in the interview, refers to a sexual perversion, fetish, by which a person derives sexual excitement from the presence of feces. The term coprophagia pertains to the actual act of eating excrement. Both paraphilias are commonly associated with homosexual behavior and are a regular feature of homosexual pornography. In her concluding thoughts, she writes that a bishop should so glibly refer to such a disgusting and perverted practice in a public interview clearly indicates to me that you are not unschooled in the ways and dangers of sexual perversion and hence have no real need for me to instruct you on the perversity of homosexual behaviors nor on the grave necessity of combating the homosexual collective 
and other forces of organized perversion. And so I was interested to see how Randy Engel might follow up in December of 2016 when Francis again used the perverse terminology. And Engel did not disappoint. In an online article entitled, Francis Repeats Use of Vile Words Associated with Sexual Perversion in a Public Forum, Engel again takes Francis to the woodshed for repeating the, quote, very same terms, coprophilia and coprophagia, in almost the same context that he used them more than four years ago in reference to the Roman Curia before he became Pope, unquote. And she goes on to further state that Bergoglio was deliberate and had intent. There is no question that the Pope knew exactly what he was doing when he chose to deliberately link a disgusting and perverse nomenclature to the communication issue of false news. And further, what other objective is there in doing such a dastardly deed than to desensitize the faithful to the horror of sexual perversion and to attempt to introduce perverted words and acts into normal Catholic parlance. And like Sister John Edwin at St. Francis Xavier, Engel demands that the pontiff, the leader of the Catholic Church and its 1.2 billion followers, apologize. She writes, Francis needs to offer a prompt apology first to God and then to the faithful Catholics everywhere for his misuse of the papal office to promulgate such perverted and degrading terminology in a public forum. I respectfully suggest for his eternal welfare that the apology comes sooner than later. But here's where I differ with Randy Engel. All too often, Catholics can't see beyond their own cliques. Engel suggests Bergoglio intended to introduce perverted words and acts into normal Catholic parlance. I vehemently disagree. The fact of the matter is that the story broke well outside the bounds of the Catholic community into the secular mainstream media at large. There's a reason why it was picked up by all the major media outlets. Either the Vatican Secretariat for Communications sent out a communique or a media accused of coprophilia noted the Pope's salacious and sensational remarks and knew Bergoglio's fake news would sell. I think it's clear that Bergoglio intended to desensitize all people to the horror of sexual perversion, irrespective of any religious affiliation, and intended to introduce perverted words and acts into common parlance. Not Catholic. Common. What Engel so effectively stated in her open letter of 2013, the homosexual collective, a.k.a. La Lobby Gay, has long been aware that to control language is to control the way people think, since we think in terms of words. The words we speak determine the thoughts we have. It is by controlling language, a form of Pavlovian conditioning, that the collective seeks to change the dominant shape of reality. Francis, then, is clearly conditioning the masses that a world religious leader whose words and actions are expected to be beyond reproach might gratuitously use vulgar and sexually perverse terms in an attempt to normalize mental disorders most often associated with homosexuality can only be a sign of the apocalypse. Thanks for watching.